The final race meeting at the Singapore Turf Club on the 5th of October will honour its employees and its 182-year history. About 10,000 are expected to turn up, with many from the public enjoying free tickets. It will feature 10 races, culminating with the 100th and final Grand Singapore Gold Cup. Aslam Shah has more. <laughs> The end of a long chapter of horse racing in Singapore. For Jaya, who has helped maintain these tracks for over two decades, he's focused in preparing for the last dance. But the occasion leaves a bittersweet taste. Definitely emotions run very high. But on the other hand, what we need to do is, uh, you know, we want to showcase our capacity. We get emotions run over us, we, we don't go anywhere. So you want to celebrate this event uh, with the rest of the world. Jaya is among numerous Turf Club employees who will be honoured through one of the races on the final day. The employees get to choose the trophy's name, calling it the Singapore Turf Club Trophy. Come October 5th, race goers will fill these seats around me for the very last time. Now the facility itself will close in 2027 and over the years it has hosted dignitaries like Queen Elizabeth II and key events like the Youth Olympic Games. Now beyond just a fitting finale, the 10 races on the day is also a celebration of the club's rich history. This entire grandstand level one will be free for the public who get to witness this historic event if they can get their hands on the tickets. Each race will focus on a particular period of the club, honouring its heritage across the different eras. And beyond the races, the public can also enjoy a heritage walk, which talks about the evolution of the Singapore Gold Cup. There will also be a photo competition highlighting the Turf Club's architecture as well as flora and fauna. Our main goal is really to let people see the club from a different perspective that is not just racing. So through this initiative, we receive quite an overwhelming response. Several high-profile guests are expected to present prizes on the last day, including Speaker of Parliament Xia Kian Ping and the first local female jockey, Magdalene Tan. Well, with the final races coming up in less than three weeks, jockeys and horse owners will be among the most affected by the Turf Club's closure. Here to share their experiences in Singapore's horse racing scene, I have with me two gentlemen, horse owner Eric Ho, who is also managing director of Equine Sanctuary. Joining us all the way from Guangzhou is former jockey Matthew Kelly. Uh, he is currently a work rider at the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Welcome, gentlemen. First to you, Eric. Look, you, you've got over two decades of experience in equine and, and horse racing. Uh, what does this closure mean for the industry? Is it the absolute end of the road? Uh, I would say yes. Mm. So from the initial shock, and then um, denial, um, and then acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I think the industry tried to see how we can maybe um, appeal for an extension or whether there's a chance of a U-turn on, on the decision to shut racing. Um, but I guess by now, um, the acceptance, the reality has set in. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of us, most of the industry anyway, we have all accepted that there's, there's no U-turn. Mm. And um, so we just have to move on. And make the necessary plans. Um, yes. Okay, I get, okay for, for some of us, like trainers, jockeys, mm. um, owners, we, we have the option of racing elsewhere, yeah. overseas. Yeah. But it's a lot different because yeah. um, in your home country, you race, you contribute to the industry. It's a different feeling yeah. um, compared to when you race horses overseas. I, I can imagine. And, and Matthew, you, you must uh, have some of the same emotions because you turned pro, what, back in 2007 and you've shared that this is really your whole life, isn't it? Horse racing. Uh, what does it mean to you? What does racing as well yes, as the exactly, closure? Yeah. You know, like racing, racing is mm. like... Racing meant everything to me. You now, like I left school at seventeen to go to a practice school at you now at seventeen years old, and then when I applied to get my license in Singapore, I get rejected two times because of my weight problem, and then eventually I, you know, I get my license. You know, like 
that's where in Singapore, that's where I, you know, in Singapore Turf Club, that's where I met my wife, Jillian. <laughs> so, like I say, you know, the Singapore Turf Club, you know, my whole life is there, you know, everything is meant to me, everything is there. That's, that, that is uh, very meaningful, I can tell uh, for you, Matthew. But staying with you, uh, I understand that your last race with the Singapore Turf Club was in January. And now you're with the Hong Kong Jockey Club, working a lot in Guangzhou as well. How was that process of relocating and changing? How was that for you? Like I said, you know, it's very hard for me you now to be relocating you know, and find, finding a new job. You know, I have to left behind my wife, you know, Jillian, and my three kids and in Singapore. And I have meet, missed all their birthday and other important life events. Mm. And um, well, I'm very grateful here for the job here in China. It's very lonely here, been here all alone by myself. And, you know, like I said, you know, it's, it's a very hard decision for me to make, you know, for me to, to, to come all the way here to left the, the family behind. I understand. Uh, Eric, you, you know, you've heard it's, it's quite difficult uh, to unwind something that's been part of your life for so long. But how have you, as well as other owners, tackled the challenging of your horses? What have you done with the horses? Uh, where would they go? How would, how would you maintain their well-being? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so over the last um, 18 months, mm. since the announcement anyway, um, so I've been in contact or, or I've met up with quite a number of fellow owners. Yeah. Um, so for myself, I started to segment them into... Um, How many horses do you have? So right now I have, um, including managing mm -hmm. some horses, I have more than 20. Right. Um, so that's after sending away yeah. probably about 30 odd horses over the last uh, 15 months. Yeah, since the announcement. Mm. Yeah, so I guess that's something that um, we had to just move on and, and face. So planning the, the exodus of uh, horses. So not just, I guess the mass majority of horses, they will all go um, to Malaysia, mm. one of the clubs in Malaysia. But of course, we have been sending some horses to Hong Kong as well. Um, some horses, a few dozen horses, probably about 40 odd horses, mm. Um, after October, we'll head back to Australia or, or New Zealand, where they came from. About right now, um, the plan is to have about 30 sent back to Philippines, um, but the likely uh, number is probably going to be 15. So yeah, I mean, between owners and the Singapore Turf Club, we have been planning mm -hmm. and uh, there are already plans in place uh, where to send the horses to. Okay, so uh, you, you already have uh, an idea of what's going to happen to keep them happy at least, you know. But for yourself, uh, uh, for both of you gentlemen, Matthew, perhaps for, for you, um, what are your hopes for the horse racing scene in Asia going forward? Well, my hope for the horse racing scene in Asia is, you know, maybe the standard of the horse racing increase. And at the same time, the welfare of the horses also increases as well. Uh, so you, you'd like to see it still continue to flourish uh, within Asia. Uh, what about you, Eric? Uh, before you go, what do you hope to see for uh, the horse racing scene in Asia? And then, what are your hopes for the Grand Singapore Gold Cup? Because you do have some horses in that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, we are pretty much uh, emotionally attached to the sport of horse racing. Yeah. So um, I think among a lot of us, we are still hoping that there might be a next Singapore racing. Or, or, um, so if you can't pursue it in Singapore, I'm sure you will travel to uh, keep up this love of yours. Yes, um, like myself, fellow owners and, and trainers, we will. Mm -hmm. um, we have to. Mm -hmm. um, but since the announcement of Singapore racing's closure, there have been uh, a lot of interest among other Asian countries. Mm -hmm that wants to set up uh, a racetrack as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that can be, one of them can be the next um, venue for, for some from this uh, racing fraternity. Mm, and, and I also was asking you about your hopes for the Grand Singapore Gold Cup, the last of the races. I think as you rightly said, yes. right? Because um, I said it might be a very solemn mm. affair. There'll be guests that will be very excited and uh, we'll be out there for a fun day out, exciting day out. But to a lot of us, the trainers, the mm. owners, the jockeys, it'll be quite a, a solemn and sad day because it's like attending a funeral, really, because 
it's the last day of uh, Singapore racing after 182 years. Uh, I understand that, but I'm still wishing you all the luck and all the best. And, you, and, uh, and I, I hope there's a happy outcome at the end. And the same to you uh, as well in Guangzhou, Matthew. So I've been speaking here with uh, the former Thank jockey you. and work rider at the uh, Hong Kong Jockey Club, Matthew Kelly, as well as Eric Koh. He is a horse owner and managing director of Equine Sanctuary.